911, where's your emergency? Hey, I need to get a... Hello? Hello? He was sort of into everything. First in line, first to show everybody what to do, how to do it. You need to get an ambulance? What's going on? Uh, we got a guy who's passed out. He drank way too much and we found him this morning. It never occurred to me that he wouldn't be able to handle situation or go out there and be on top of his game like he was in any other situation. Um, I have to say, I had absolutely no, I really didn't have any worries. I don't think parents are aware of what their kids are being asked to navigate, particularly when they go to college. How much did you guys drink? Uh, 23 shots. 23. How did we as adults, where is it that we didn't say, if your friend is unconscious, you need to call 911? The problem is people wait too long. They bring them in and they're totally unresponsive. They've already blocked their airway. They've already had a period of time with not enough oxygen. And it can be limited in terms of how much we're going to be able to reverse damage that's already been done. Hazing is a process based on a tradition used by groups to maintain a pecking order or for discipline. If these people are willing to put you through that kind of torment, are these really the people you want as your friends? And, and I say to them, you know, well, did you have a group of friends at home? Well, sure. Did that group of friends haze you? You know, um, well, no. So, well, that's because that's not normal. <laughs> you know? This is a 600-year-old problem. It's not going away overnight. So what can we keep doing differently now to keep trying to get the message out? You don't understand the feeling, I guess, until you wake up and know that you had six hours to call 911 and you were too ignorant, too scared, too whatever to, to make that call. The bottom line message is, if you see a friend who's impaired and you think may be in danger, call for help. Gordy would be with us today if somebody had called for help.